gay to the ones he loves. There's no greater love than this you will ever see. He came down to be a man and left his throne and gave up glory. I am alive today cause you gave your it was that little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Jesus was that little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Jesus was that little lamb. It's a perfect gift of love. God made to ones he loved. He came down to be a man and left his throne and gave up glory. I am alive today because you gave your son. It was a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Jesus was a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Jesus was
Let's bless his name a little more. God bless. You may be seated. You know, the, the, it's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. And I think by now, if you have not heard, the vision has been cast for this year to be the year of discipleship. Amen? In Pentecostal Tabernacle International. We are trying to disciple the brethren, not just the young people, but everyone. Amen? Amen. Um, let's, let's be patient, especially with the younger ones. We're not going to disciple them at the expense of, of godliness. Amen? Amen? At the expense of godliness, that means we're going to maintain godliness. Amen? Amen. So if you're invited Amen. to come up here, you know that there's a, a certain protocol that is employed for coming up here. Amen? Let's stand. It comes down for the words of the Lord. Amen? <laughs> One of our precious young men to introduce the speaker for today, Brother Tajay. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. The name of our speaker today is John Bill Dawes, otherwise called Brother Kirk. He helps out a lot around the church. He Sometimes he comes and helps clean. He helps us with the music, instruments. They're broken, he might fix them. Also, he's married. He never gave me the name before. <laughs> um, so church, I just want to introduce Brother Kirk to you as our preacher for today. Amen. Praise the Lord, this Lord. Jesus. Well, give time to your round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. was the psalmist David that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Uh, if this is your testimony, you can join me in the next verse that says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. With me. Uh, let us exalt his name together. You're still quiet. If that's your testimony, that you bless the Lord at all times. You can join me magnifying the Lord. Exalting his name. I don't know if you have ever sought the Lord, Amen. but I sought the Lord and He heard me Amen. and He delivered me. This woman cried to the Lord again. Uh, come on, somebody who knows that God is. Somebody who can testify of this. Keeping power. Somebody who can say if it had not been. I, I, I joined with Sister Claudine this morning saying thanks. Amen. She, she, she gave you some examples. You didn't get up this morning and put your shoes on your head. Uh, you remember that your hand was your hand. Uh, just last week I was at work and uh, one of my clients, they took their shirt and they put it on their feet for a pants. Amen, amen. It is enough to give God thanks for having your mind intact. Uh, you know quite well that you've been through some stuff that should have caused you to be crazy by now. But you're still here. You're still standing. I was reading something just this week past errands and it, 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 it troubles my mind a little bit and I'll let you sit in just a little while. I, I was reading in the book of Mark and Jesus was by the sea and he was teaching. He left and he said we're going to go over to the other side. When he went over to the other side there was a man that dwelt among the tombs. It seems like they are gotten over to a graveyard when they came off that ship. The Bible says that the man saw Jesus from afar and he ran and he worshipped God. 
The interesting thing is this. Jesus decided to have a conversation with this man. He asked him, what's your name? He said his name was Legions. Which means that there are many Legions, anywhere from three to 6,000 demons. The part that really got to me was this. If a demon recognized Jesus without any intimate relationship with him, and he can stop to worship God. How much more you and I that has a relationship with Jesus? Come on, somebody. I'm just going to give about 30 seconds to decide how you want to praise God. I'm not going to tell you what to say to them. Come on, open up your mouth and give God thanks. Demon through recognizing Jesus from afar can bow and worship him. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. You can take your seats for a minute. You can take your seats for a minute. We'll be greeted past the earrings. The shepherd of this house, uh, sometimes it seems like he might rough us up a little bit. But it was Paul in one of his writings that says, I would, you could bear with me a little in my folly because I'm jealous for you with godly jealousy. So you got to understand, I, I, I'll talk for him, bear with him. It's what he wants to do. Is where he wants to bring us. And he's trying indeed to bring out disciples. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let me greet the precious sister Aaron's. An example for ladies, Pastor Small. God bless you. I was indeed blessed by your ministry a couple weeks ago. Elder Small, Mr. Rowe, Mrs. Skinner. And to Sister Delia, who is the president of the youth department. God bless you. To all you, my father's children, God bless you. Just wave your hand one more time and give God a praise. There's an old song that says, I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. Don't tell your voice like that. I need your I need every hour I need
turn, oh God and Father, we give you thanks this morning for your goodness. We give you thanks for your mercy. We give you thanks for your grace. God, we come to the realization that we can't do anything without you. We come, oh God, to the realization that we need you. God, every move we make, we need you. Every hour of the day, we need you. God, if, if it had not been for your mercy, that is yes. God, we would not be able to stand in your presence. But God, we pray to you, oh God, that you send your deliverance, send your healing, send restoration, send deliverance, oh God. Oh God, as we seek to give you thanks. Oh God, we pray that preaching will be easy. We pray, oh God, that you'll mend some broken hearts. We pray that you'll heal somebody. We pray that you'll, we pray that you'll bring restoration, God. As we come to you, we come to you and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Let every glad heart say amen. amen. I need you. I need you. I believe one of the verses say, I need thee. Enjoy your pain. When Ferdinand says, come quickly and abide. Oh, I need thee. I need thee. Grab your Bibles, grab your tablets, grab your smartphones. We'll bring our attention to the book of Luke, the 18th division, from verse 18 to verse 23. Chapter 18, verse 18 to about 23. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, let's read together, what shall I do? And Jesus said unto him, Give God a praise and you take care of your testimony. Amen. 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 Uh, the last part of uh, last year, my wife and I we went on a cruise and one evening went to one of the shows that they had. Uh, about the ending time of the show, there was a song that was sung and right there, I turned to my wife and said, I just got the title of the message. And she looked at me and I was like, I'm joking, right? I was like, no, God just gave me the title of the message. And I was like, okay, I'll work with it. I'll talk with God and see what happens. In the 1970s, there was one of America's most favorite singer who was coming to the end of his career. And uh, a man from Canada got a song and introduced it to him. And he said to him, no, I'm ending my career now. I don't want another song. I'm not trying to go into this thing anymore. The guy pushed on some more and eventually he decided to hear the words of the song. And I know that we're very holy, but don't throw me out. Don't throw me out. Don't throw me out just yet. The name of the song is My Way. A song by American's favorite singer, Frank Sinatra. He did things 
his way. He recalls how he did different, different things and not in any shy way. It is funny how in life we like our own way. Don't feel too special. It's not just you. It's the person next to you. The person that is sitting next to you, next to you, over there to you. In fact, it is also me. Uh, sometimes something will happen at the house and I might get on my wife and I'm, I'll ask, well, why wasn't this done? Or why is this this way? And she, or excuse, I call it, she said to me, well, hun, remember you like things a particular way. Truth be told, there's nobody that doesn't like things their way. Weird enough, even a child, before he or she can even talk, like things. I'll prove it to you. Ever give a child a toy that they become used to, even before he or she can talk? Try taking that toy from him or her. Introduce them to a food that they like. Try to give them something else. The next thing you know is that they're throwing a tantrum. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I come by here to tell you this morning, you can't go to heaven your way. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 says, There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The book also tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 7, that the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. Why? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways. Uh huh, said the Lord. You can't go to heaven your way. In a research done by Barna Research Group some time ago, an overwhelming majority of North Americans continue to believe that there is life after death. Not only that, but they believe heaven and hell does exist. What's more interesting is that most think that they are heaven bound. And according to this research, nearly two thirds of North Americans in the national survey that was done believe that they will go to heaven. And half of that believe that they can earn salvation upon good deeds, even without accepting Christ as their eternal life. Let me clarify that, Brother Matthew. You can't go to heaven alone based on your good deeds. Whoa. Uh, since you don't believe me, I'll draw your attention to it. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall Whoa. enter Whoa. into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say, to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Whoa. Look at your name and say, good deed. Good deed. Good deed. <laughs> have we not cast out devils? Amen. Good deed. <laughs> and in thy name done many wondrous works. I told you, these are good deeds. But listen to what Jesus says. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Good deed alone is not enough to get you to heaven. Well, I might as well remind you. You can't go to heaven your way. So I had a talk with Jesus and I said, well, how can one get to heaven? And I believe I got my first serious message, Pastor Aaron, in that there are three things that he pointed out to me. Not that there aren't many others. But one of them is deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. The other is confess Jesus as Lord. And the other one is to repent and be baptized. Today I want to talk to you a little bit. I promise I won't be much longer. On denying yourself and taking up your cross and follow Jesus. Uh, we read from the book of Luke, uh, 
let's go to chapter 9 and verse 23. It says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. The, the Greek term for deny is a pardon near me, which means to disown or to renounce. It is easy to deny someone or to deny something. But when it comes to denying oneself, it becomes a little more hard because we like to feel the feeling of empowerment. We like to feel in charge. We like to feel that we are our own boss, if you will. But how does one deny their own self, let alone take up a cross to follow God? Whoa. Well, come here, Brother Paul. I hear him saying, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Come on, some of you, you've come too far from where you started from. You got to forget some stuff to deny yourself. I know that we've been into some relationships that have been wonderful and we, we, we tend to not want to get away from them. But look at your neighbor and say, forget the things which are behind. I said, look at your neighbor and say, forget the things which are behind. Uh-huh. So, so I know we enjoy going to the club and we get nice and we feel it in the one drop, but we've got to forget the things which are behind. I hear the whole hymn saying, leaving all to follow Jesus, turning from the world away. I would love to tell you this morning that it is easy, it is smooth, but the truth of the matter is denying oneself, it is not an easy task. Whoa. There are some things that you got to be prepared for when you choose to deny yourself. Uh, it is funny that you have to be prepared to lose friendships. You got to be prepared for to lose family members. You got to be prepared sometime to uh, lose a job. The character might be on the line, but for, the, for Jesus, it's not a problem because He will uh, take care of you. To, to, to deny yourself is somewhat uh, is somewhat counterintuitive in that it goes against something that seems logical. It goes against something that seems practical or what makes common sense. Whoa, whoa. In our culture today, denying oneself, uh, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it seems counterintuitive, yeah. Pastor Aaron. Uh, our culture is all about self-esteem, yeah. self-acceptance, self-fulfillment, self-gratification. Every time we put on our clothes to go somewhere or uh, we decide to eat a meal or uh, we move from one location to the other sister page, Good God, if we're not careful, even in the bathroom, we got to take a selfie. Uh, we got to tweet. We got to snap. And we got to check in. I don't look at it funny. It's, it's, it don't, don't make it sound like I'm the only one that does some of those things. <laughs> but the message that our culture teaches today is moral decadence. Uh... Do whatever it takes to make you feel good. That's what our culture teaches. Can I tell you, you got to deny yourself if you want to make it into heaven. Our culture says, buy whatever you want to buy. Wear whatever you want to wear. Use whomever you want to use. Sleep with whomever you want to sleep with. Say whatever you want to say. Hurt whoever you want to hurt to make yourself feel good at any cost. That is what our culture teaches. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with uh, feeling good, but you can't go to heaven your way. You've got to deny yourself of some of these feel good times. I remember. The old mothers used to sing when I go to prayer meeting and they used to sing an old song that I love so much. It says, 
thou my everlasting portion more than friend or life to me all along life's pilgrim journey savior let me walk with thee and sometimes they start crying even before they went to the refrain but I hear the refrain says close to thee that is what they cared about close to thee that is what made them feel good close to thee that is what made them feel worth close to thee that is what gave them fulfillment God, oh God all along my walk here on earth Savior, let me walk with thee. I don't know what they were tapping into, but they were praying really hard. They got to the second verse and they said, Not for ease, nor a world of pleasure, nor for fame, my prayer shall be. Gladly will I toil and suffer. If that is not denying oneself, I don't know what it is. But Savior, let me walk with thee, close to thee, close to thee, all along life's pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you can't go to heaven, you're away, I heard you, Pastor, Small, you got to kill flesh. My God. Yeah. I heard you, sister, didn't it, Dahlia? We, we, we can't just pretty up sin. We got to call sin, sin sin. We can't say to a mistake. We mess up. I heard you, Brother Walker. We've got to eradicate sin out of the camp. And all of that is denying. Oneself. Hallelujah, God is so in the culture that teaches us about self-fulfillment and self-acceptance and all of these things, how do you tell me that I have to deny myself? It doesn't make any kind of sense. Well, there's some things that you got to be ready to face when we talk about denying yourself. You got to be prepared for opposition. You got to be prepared for shame. And you gotta be prepared for suffering. You gotta be even prepared for death. Yeah. I would like to tell you that it is smooth, but people will oppose you just because you choose Christ. Okay, you don't believe me? I'll prove it to you. The book of John, chapter 15, and verse 19 says, If he were of the world, the world would have loved you. I know it's still quiet. If you were of the world, the world would have loved its own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Opposition. Uh, we're talking about taking up the cross and following Jesus. These are some things that will come against us. Shame. We've got to be prepared for shame. The cross. In those times in Rome, it was designed for people to be shamed. They, they, they used to have them for hours hang naked on a cross. That's shame. We've got to be prepared for suffering. The execution was no simple thing. But listen to what happened here. Listen to this word. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes. Aren't you glad that there are benefits comes when, when, you, when you deny yourself and choose Christ? Listen to what Peter says. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed he may be glad also with exceeding joy let's check out Romans and if children then hears 
ears of God and joint ears with Christ. If so, that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Listen, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We gotta be prepared for death. The ultimate aim of the cross was to kill. And so it is that we've got to kill flesh. We've got to mortify the deeds of the body. And I'm getting ready to close right here. You can't go to heaven your way. You've got to deny yourself. The story we read earlier from the book of Luke. It says the rich guy came to Jesus. Wanting to know how he can inherit eternal life. Jesus spoke to him. He says, you, you know, you know. He gladly stated, all these I have kept from my youth up. Some qualified pastor here. Yes. Good. Jesus looked at him in his boastful self and he says, I can imagine him give a chuckle and says, yet my friend, lackest thou one thing. Sell all that you own. Sell all that you have. Give it away. And you will inherit treasures. You'll have treasures in heaven. But he was so taken up with what he had here on earth. The Bible said that when Jesus spoke to him, he walked away sorrowful. The reason being, he was very rich. What is it this morning that you're holding on to? What is it that is so hard for you to deny to follow after Christ? What is it that is keeping you from coming into his will for living that kind of life that Christ wants you to live? Christ is saying today, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. If you'll all stand. He didn't just leave us there. Further on in that same chapter, he says, I believe it was Peter spoke out and says, Well, Christ, we have forsaken all to follow you. And Jesus gave them some form of consolation. He says, well, there's no man that leave all that he has, whether it be mother, father, wife, possessions. For my name's sake, that will not receive manifold. Guess when? In this life, there are things that are awaiting you in this life. All you have to do is deny yourself. Decide that I'm going to choose Christ. Is there anybody this morning that decide that? I need to make this new commitment. I need to make this commitment afresh. That I'm going to deny myself. And I will choose Christ. Is there anybody that we can pray for this morning? Is there somebody who wants to choose Christ this morning? Even with it being hard. Okay, I'll make a little
you're singing like you're playing, if you're tired while you handle the song. Come on. Some of us have been walking with God and we walk out of God. There's a call. There's a call. There's a call. Young people, I've got to put a call. Call on you. Put your hand on the Come on, man. Mm. 
This service is going to go down in this place. It's a day that God is going to put some call upon some people that are specifically. You go down there, stand right here. Come, lift your hand. Yes, come on. Yes, yes. Come on. Yes, yes. The Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yes, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost.
life are going to be forever changed from this day on. Come on, you feel the call? You feel the call? You feel the call? You feel the call? There's a thing about getting into the secret place of the most I know, virtue. You can get there. You can get there. The atmosphere is right. I feel the atmosphere. I feel the atmosphere. Come on. Come on. You're as far as you want to go with God, but you can go deeper if you want to go deeper in God. Unto deep, deep call it 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 unto deep. deep, it unto deep. Somebody here, your soul is yearning to go deeper in God. Come on, come on, you feel that when your hand up? Come on, pull, draw from the source of the divine right now. He's here, he's right here, right here. There's a call. There's a call. There's a call. How oh, can you make a lesser sacrifice? How oh, can I make a lesser sacrifice? When Jesus gave his own. There's a call. There's a call.
Sister Monica. Pass on the call. Pass on the call. Yeah. Yeah. Then I say, that's it. When you're weak, then is he strong? Yeah. 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 Don't be afraid to go there. He'll take care of you. There is a liar. Doesn't want us to make the commitment. Because he knows if we make the commitment, God is going to take us deeper, higher. And if you had a bad burn, there's some things coming against our young people. There's some things coming against this church, but we arrest them right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Answer the call. Answer the call. Answer the call. Answer the call. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord lifts up the light of His countenance upon you. Give you peace. You stay forevermore. Push your hand up further. Go to sin again. The Lord bless you. Hey, Keep you. Hey. The Lord make His face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lifts up the light of His countenance upon you. Stand forevermore. Yeah.